This is the national flag of the United States of America, at least one version of it. Because this depiction, in exactly this form, ticks all legal boxes. How's that possible? What? For real? Did I lock the door? What? Cash your card? What? So many questions. How about some answers? What the US flag looks like is determined by the Flag Act, of which there have been three incarnations. Flag Act 1 from 1777 specifies the flag to be 13 stripes alternately red and white and the blue field with a union of 13 white stars. Union is no vexillological term, but it seems like the Whigmen thought no one would understand that the group of stars and number of the states represents the union of states if one didn't specifically address it. 1794, Flag Act 2 throws all of that out the window, since in the meantime Vermont and Kentucky have joined up, so following the idea one star and stripe per state, it's 15 stars, and scandalously, 15 stripes. 24 years it stays that way, until in 1818, Flag Act 3 goes back to 13 stripes but keeps it one star per state. Changes to the flag from now on every following 4th of July, aka Independence Day, aka Smith Willard World Saving Day. And since lasting symbols are only for loser countries with universal healthcare, from Flag Act 1 to now, there's been not only one version of the flag, two's too few, three's cliche, so let's make it a nice even number like. The flag itself might have changed a few times, but the Flag Act of 1818 is still going strong. And according to the Flag Act, this flag is just as acceptable as this flag, because the Flag Act is so very vague. 13 horizontal stripes, alternately red and white, and a blue field with as many white stars as there are states. That's it. No more info given. That's why there's an infinity of versions that are completely compliant. The stripes can start with white instead of red and have different heights. The proportions can be as long or short as you want. The shape can be a rectangle, but just as well half an ellipsis. It can even be a hexagon if you're into that stuff. We aren't though. The blue field can again have all kinds of proportions, shapes and rotations and be placed in the upper left corner as well as the lower right. The stars can be freely distributed and rotated within the field, be bigger and smaller, have different numbers of points and since we're having so much fun, the different parts can feature any shade of red, white and blue we fancy. Main thing being, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 horizontal stripes, alternately red and white, check, and a blue field with as many white stars as there are states. Check. Now it's a bit cheeky to exploit every single undefined detail to produce this crime against humanity, I'll admit. Of course one can expect people who've seen a country flag once or twice in their lives to arrive at the conclusion that the stripes should be the same height, the stars arranged in a neat pattern, and the flag a rectangle. Why do I act like a T-Rex in a climbing gym then? Because an imprecisely defined flag doesn't just lead to made-up problems, but also real ones, as happened in 1912. Mr. President, man, we've got a problem. I'm listening. We've checked all kinds of government agencies and found 66 cans of country flags with different proportions. That's not good, right? It's not, boss. But so bad. Well... Right. Let's do something about that. Nameless intern, get me my pen. Since 1912, there have been a number of presidential executive orders exactly specifying all things the Flag Act doesn't. What are the proportions, how high is each stripe, how are the stars aligned, and how much space do they leave to the field's edge? Everything well described and depicted in the appended sketch. Super nicely done, good job. But important point, those executive orders explicitly only apply to government agencies, so that doesn't mean this flag is any more correct than this flag. Of course it makes a better impression if you show up with the executive order suit wearing version, not a funky smelling Montessori quilt, but according to the law, both are fine. Since these executive orders specify every single detail for US flags and government use, there are no more ambiguities, no more wars, and strawberries now have 8% more vitamin C. We interrupt our regular program for an important message, which might derail the course of this video completely. Our sources tell us that the flag specification executive order doesn't define a color standard. I repeat, the flag colors are not clear. More information about this situation after a few ads about some stupid thing you don't need. Great. No universal color standard for the US flag. It's red, white and blue. What more do you want? Well, red, white, blue can be like this, or this, or this. Which one's right? 
Next best thing to a flag color standard is the federal specification with the enticing name DDDF416F from the General Services Administration. That's how far down the ladder we've come. Not a law from Congress, not an executive order from the President, but internal rules from civil servants who order paper clips for other civil servants. But what the hell, what's it say? Are we finished soon? I'm dizzy from all those laws and norms and standards. Tony. This is serious vexillological work. We can't just stop halfway through. We owe that to the people out there. Otherwise, we can just go ahead and make five incredible flag facts that'll blow your mind or some other trash. So, we go on. Okay. The colors of the flag are Old Glory Red, White, and Old Glory Blue. Old Glory, obviously nickname of the US flag, so the colors of the American flag are the colors of the American flag. Sounds pretty dumb, but is so dumb not. Because you find these colors clearly defined in the 10th edition of the Standard Color Reference of America, a 16-page book with industry standard textile samples made from silk, dated 1981. Luckily, one can purchase said item for the paltry sum of 400 US American dollarios. And now guess who, because research is king, bought it. Not I. Pay $400 for a 16-page textile sample book to ascertain colors I sorta kinda already know? Are you drunk? I can save me those 400 bucks, because the joint that made the book also runs a page on this World Wide Web, where our colors can be found. Very good. Now let's take the colors of the federal specification DDDF416F, slap them onto the flag, and what we get is this. Not that amazing, really. What went wrong? The color standard only works for textile flags you can touch not for screens. With physical items, we're used to them not appearing blindingly bright, at least if we don't bombard them with high-powered spotlights. On a screen blasting hex code 6F white all day, eggshell white and darker shades of red and blue seem too subtle. Might look great on polyester, but on screens it seems pretty, dirty, dingy, disgusting. That's why there are usually different standards for textiles, print and screens. Our good friend DDDF416F only specifies one of these three though. Colors for print, and for our purposes most important, screens stay undefined. So what? How's that concern me? Let's say you want to edit the Wikipedia page for the US flag. Which colors will you choose? Or you want to produce and explain a video on the American annexation of Hawaii. Which colors will you choose? Generally, you can pick any shade of red, white and blue you want, and no one will be too mad about it. But if the flags on websites of different agencies of the same government use vastly different colors, that's not a great look. The Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs goes like this, the US Mission Sample website like this, the Texas Government Code like this, and the US Embassy in London like this. With such a diversity of official flags, fights are just a matter of time. On Wikipedia, the topic sometimes does induce digital chair throwing. What are we doing here? The ECA has determined a clear RGB standard that's to be followed by all government agencies. That's none of the ECA's business, you punk! Now, of course we all want to get along, and a bit more pocket money, and one of those cool bubblegums with sticky tattoos in the pack. But most of all, getting along. So what's the solution? There is no solution, because there is no digital flag color standard. Sure, you can just take the General Services Administration Federal Specification DDDF416F, but that one's just for textiles, not screens. If you're down a standard somewhere, you can't just use any other in its place. No separate standard, no proper solution. Of course, determining new standards, pretty hard. A 330 million inhabitant economic and military superpower that's dropped a few people on the moon and two atomic bombs in Japan is apt to reach its limits there. Only, it doesn't look great when an island with the thousands of that population in a darn cold corner of the Atlantic does get the job done. With flying colors, no less. Iceland has a flag act that gives clear instructions on flag construction and a prime ministerial executive order specifying the exact color standards for physical flags, print and screens. Iceland 100 points. No notes. And who knows? Maybe a country so crazy about vexillology that its national anthem is more about its flag than the country itself might someday manage to bang out an executive order determining color standards of the Holy Trinity, textiles, print and screens to bring order where chaos reigned. Not like there's much else to do. One more flag fact to go. The Union Jack you know, right? Nah, not the British one. The American one. No? Then I can recommend you the new bonus video, exclusively for patrons. If you're interested, patreon.com slash tapakappa. Now with one trial month for free. Otherwise, subscribe, bell, merch, links in the description, you know what to do.
Thank you. Goodbye.